If you wanna build an effective orchestral template in Logic Pro, then stay away from multi-temporal instruments. In this video, we're gonna take a look at two alternatives that you can use to help improve your template. Hey everyone, my name is Robert Rodriguez and I'm a media composer. If you're new to the channel, then I wanna invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any new videos. So this is actually part two of a template building series. I'll leave a link to the first video right up above and in the description box down below. And in that video, I give a pretty detailed overview of my Logic Pro template. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take a look at what a multi timbral instrument actually is and why it isn't so effective. Okay, so if we were to open up just a brand new Logic session, what we wanna do is set up a software instrument. We're gonna pick the instrument itself. And if we were to scroll down to native instruments, you'll see Contact, Contact 5, Reactor, these are the ones that I have downloaded on my computer. So this is gonna be the start of your template where you pick your instrument. For a majority of my own template, I will use the contact free player. There is the paid option available, which I think is $400. I've gotten on pretty fine without paying that. I just use the free player, which anyone can download. Of course, there are other softwares out there like East West Play, but Contact tends to work with a majority of my samples. So you're gonna go down and you're going to pick multi-output 16 stereo. So that is going to give you 16 different outputs, the multi-output. So now that we've picked the instrument, we can take a look at the audio output. It's pretty much set up to output one and two. Output one and two is just your typical stereo output. So left and right speakers or your headphones or just a computer speaker, right? So if you look over here, this is where the multi timbral parts are. We're gonna check that on for right now, just so I can show you that this is not the direction that we wanna go when building the template. And so now we have 16 parts of this one contact instrument, right? And let's see what happens when I load in a piano. So right now we are on instrument one, channel one. The instrument refers to this one instance of contact. The channel refers to the MIDI channel that it's routed to. So right now, this track here that's highlighted a light gray is routed to MIDI channel one. And so if we were to play instrument one, MIDI channel one, we will hear a piano, right? But we can see that these volume faders all receive the green lines and receive the data. So that's a very misleading way of looking at your tracks. If you're playing something in one track, then you're gonna see data coming out of all 16 of these. And if we were to go to channel two, nothing happens because we don't have anything loaded under channel two. So if I were to do this again, now MIDI channel two has a piano track. but it's all coming out. It's all receiving the data, which is not helpful when we want to build our template. We already saw that the volume faders are linked up. The panning is all linked. You see it goes from left to right and they all do the exact same thing. The only pro that I can see with a multi timbral instrument is to maybe break up a difficult piece. So let's say you have a difficult piano part and I'm not a piano player, but like maybe you have your left hand doing one thing. And you can go on and on and on for up to 16 tracks. The pro is, you know, you can have it separated. Your right hand's doing one thing with a melody. Your left hand's doing something else with maybe chords and harmony. So that is a positive, I guess, but the cons really outweigh those pros. And so you might be wondering why even bother with 
multiple MIDI channels, multiple outputs. You could just load up one piano in one instrument track, not worrying really about MIDI channels at all. And it's fine, right? It's all there. The piano works as needed. And if you wanted to, you could create a second instrument altogether. Now we're on instrument two and there's one instance. It doesn't have to be a piano. Like it could be something from Albion strings. While you have your piano over here. This is another way that you could make your template without even worrying about multi-timbral instruments or whatever. But if you remember from the last video, that is going to take up your RAM. Out of the 32 gigs, I have 18 free. The more that you just load up and more instances of contact that you have, then the more that you're actually going to waste of your resources and your resources are probably the most important thing to keep in mind when building your template. Shameless plug, BBC Discover, check out my most recent video on why you should use it, how it's resourceful, and why it's great for new composers. So this example of individual samples per track is just not going to be sustainable for you. There is a more effective and sustainable way of doing this, which is what we'll talk about now. So the first and probably most popular alternative is to use your auxiliary tracks or your aux tracks. So I went back to a brand new session, forget everything we talked about with multi-timbral instruments. We're going to load up our multi-output 16 stereo and leave everything else as it is. Your device will probably say something else, but that's fine. And we're going to create it. So it looks very similar to what we just did. This is the Spitfire Studio Strings Professional. And so we have a few different articulations. These are gonna be your legatos, your longs, your shorts, your pizzicatos, your tremolos. So let's say I wanna do a legato. And then let's say I want to do some pizzicato right after that. And let's say I wanna do some short spiccato after that. And then maybe a tremolo after that. Even though we have four different samples loaded up, in one instrument, look what's gonna happen. That one instrument is only going to play the first patch that is routed to it. So that's gonna be MIDI channel one. If we wanted to do short pizzicato or spiccato or tremolo, we don't have anything that's routed to it, right? What we're going to do is go down here if you're using the free contact player. We're going to go to batch functions and clear output selection and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. And so what we did down here was create one output, a second output, a third output and a fourth output matching the four samples that are loaded up. So we have the mixer open, which shows our instrument one. Down here at the bottom of the track, you'll see a plus sign. We wanna open it up so that we get an extra one, which shows contact three and four, which matches contact three and four. We'll add another one, which shows five and six, five and six, and we'll add one more, seven and eight, seven and eight. So our first instrument is going to be legato still. Great. I'm just hopping on back to the regular mixer window. I'm gonna highlight the three auxiliary tracks and I'm gonna press Control T. And those tracks that are found in the mixer are now gonna be on your main window. And so we have instrument one, auxiliary one, two, and three. And so instrument one will be our legatos. Auxiliary one will be our short pizzicatos. Auxiliary two will be our short spiccatos. And auxiliary three will be our tremolos.
And so this is probably the most popular way of basically doing the same thing as multi-timbral instruments, right? We have multiple tracks that we can do different articulations with, but you'll notice that the volume fader is specific to its track, right? Let me get back to zero specific to its track, specific to its track, and the panning is also specific to one track. So right there, that is a plus. And so now the second and probably not as common alternative that we can talk about is using external MIDI tracks. So as you can see, I started a brand new session once again. Even though external MIDI is right here, we're gonna hold off on that just for a sec. We're gonna go to software instrument. We wanna go back to contact. The 16 stereo is still what we wanna use. We're not touching multi timbral Let's say we wanna create five. Let's just create five instruments. So we have instrument one, which has an instance of contact, which we can then load 16 samples into it. Let's say we had 16 articulations, we can load it into one instance. And then we go to instrument two, and then you have a whole other thing. So this is great for maybe one instrument, maybe instrument two will be your violin, your violin one. And then you put in your legatos, your longs, your spiccatos, your staccatos, your pizzicatos, your tremolo, your half tone trills, your whole tone trills. Right there, that's eight articulations, right? So what we're gonna do is X out of that really quick. We have five tracks. You're gonna wanna go to your MIDI environment, command zero, and you get this kind of dated looking panel that pops up. And this is gonna show you the different tracks that you have available now. So what we'll do is go to new. We wanna create a multi-instrument. And right at the top, I'm gonna drag it down here. You'll see that we have a box that pops up with one through 16, all with a cross through it. What we wanna do in order is just press each one and that pretty much releases the 16 outputs that we initially set up with our stereo 16, right, in contact. And what we'll do is connect this to instrument one and a scary looking pop-up will pop up and we will want to remove. Now what we can do is I'm just option dragging and releasing. And I'm gonna want to bring this to instrument two. So I disconnected, I wanna keep doing that. That will be four and this will be five. And what we'll do is highlight them all. We'll go up to the instrument name section. And what I'm gonna do is starting with the farthest one to the left, I'm just gonna press M for multi and one for the number of multi that it is. And it goes in order. So M1, multi one goes to instrument one. M2 goes to instrument two. We're gonna connect M3 to instrument three. And you can drag and organize as you please. M4 goes to instrument four. M5 will go to instrument five. And that is set up, we're good for now. And so now what we're gonna do is actually create these external MIDI tracks. So you right click, we're going to new external MIDI track. We're going to reassign the track. We're going to the mixer. We're going to M1 and channel one. So that's already set up for us, beautiful. And if you want to just easily create the next track in the system, control, enter, control, enter, control, enter, control, enter, 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 whatever. Remember, we have 16 of these. We are creating a track for each MIDI channel. And that is a total of 16. So similar to our aux tracks, where one instrument track will be the host, and then we have these external MIDIs being like the arms or the branches, it's very similar in that concept. Go to the instrument, contact, instrument one. Let's say we go back to a the celli, for example, legato, pizzicato, spiccato, and tremolo. So the thing about this though, is that instrument one is already mapped to channel one. So if you were to just touch the instrument track, it will play the first channel uh, sample. 
which is not terrible, just something you have to keep in mind. So we go to MIDI channel one, M1. We see that Legato is set up. We go to channel two and it should be pizzicato. Channel three should be spiccato. And channel four is tremolo. And if we wanted, we could add more articulations to take up channel five, six, seven, up to 16. What's great about this option is that you don't have to leave channel one blank. So you have the full 16, not that you really need to use the full 16. And you can do this with instrument two, and you'll see that instrument two is empty. So you can add your violin here and instrument three could be your viola. So I've given you two different ways of reaching the same end goal of a multi timbral instrument, right? You have your auxiliary track and you have your external MIDI tracks. Now you might be wondering what is the difference? Which one should I use? And that's gonna essentially be up to you, but let's kind of discuss the pros and the cons of each. Instrument one, we left as our MIDI tracks. And instrument two, let's make our aux tracks. Up until a few years ago, the amount of tracks you could have per audio track, instrument track, auxiliary track, and external MIDI track was 250 each. So that was a total of a thousand tracks of all four categories. A few years ago, Logic updated that. So now you can have up to 1000 audio tracks. 1,000 instrument tracks, so the track that Contact is hosted on, 1,000 external MIDI tracks, and 1,000 auxiliary tracks. I don't recommend using all 4,000 tracks. Your computer might not be able to handle it, and we'll create a template that is resourceful and uses as little memory and CPU as possible, but you wanna be thinking this the entire time you're building. The great thing about the external MIDI is is that it is resourceful because you're not just using all aux tracks, you are now kind of spreading out the load. The con of an external MIDI track is that it's not treated like an instrument or audio track. So you can't add any kind of MIDI effects. You won't be able to bounce in place. All of your audio effects and your sends and your MIDI effects and your EQ is gonna come out of your one hosted instrument. These are four different articulations and one of the best things that you can do is output one can be your long, output two can be your short, and you wanna assign it accordingly. So short pizzicato goes to short, short spiccato goes to short. Tremolo remains at long. So instead of batch functions and creating outputs for each one, you now have one of two places that your articulations can go, long or short. There we go. So instead of creating aux tracks for each individual articulation, we have a track that is dedicated to the longs. So legato should be... coming out of the correct long track. And channel two is pizzicato. Coming out of our auxiliary track for shorts. Instead of having a bunch of aux tracks for each articulation, you have two to worry about. Anything that is long, anything that is short. That's one option. And let's compare with instrument two which will be our auxiliary tracks. So we open up instrument two and we added a blank instrument for our host track and then added these articulations to match our extra auxiliary tracks. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, we need one more. And so this will be our blank one. We want to control T, create those tracks. These aux tracks are treated as instrument tracks but they are just branching from the one host track. Our pizzicato is sounding a bit strange. We can add a little bit of EQ in here. 
we can add, I don't know, a little bit of a reverb in just this one articulation. And that is a major, major benefit when using auxiliary tracks compared to external MIDI. However, you need to be mindful of the resources that you are using. If you were to do a channel EQ for each auxiliary track and then a reverb for each auxiliary track, you are now using up and eating up all of your resources, your RAM, your CPU, and that's where the pro of a external MIDI track can outweigh an auxiliary track. We've seen the pros and the cons. I like to have a big template. So my most recent one is a few hundred tracks, audio, auxiliary, external MIDI instrument, but in total, it comes out to a few hundred tracks. So let me know if you got value out of today's video. Once again, I wanna invite you to like the video, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on anything new. Definitely check out part one of this series where I kind of go over the entire template that I have in Logic Pro. And if you're a new composer, check the link in the description box because I left you a free downloadable reference guide. It'll help you write music in almost any genre, so definitely check that out. All right, so keep your eyes open for the next video in this template building series, and I'll see you in the next one.